hello, welcome back. Um, in the last video I asked you what this was, so if you could guess what it is. Um, let's go and put around, there we go. And, of course, it's to hold all these. The knitting needle, knitting needle case holder. There you go, I said it. I've also got a couple of crochet hooks. And, the, when, you, when you're doing cable or some um, other knitting stitches, you might need these little needles. I'm doing cable at the moment, so I'm using the green one. And um, I've also got one of these, uh, an English size, I've turned it around the other way, and it's a metric size, so it tells me, because I have got uh, needles that are English and are metric. Uh, and I've got some. Uh, counting ties and a couple of other bits um, so I should make a little case for them little bits to go into which will be attached to the knitting needle bag um, I've got quite a few and I don't want to get rid of them because they're, they're coming handy I've been knitting a lot just lately uh, I, I didn't knit for years uh, my mum made not this one but another one very similar uh, very like this and that's where I got the idea. Uh, but unfortunately we haven't got the original. Uh, so I did this one about a year ago just to start putting the needles away. But it's not big enough so I need to make them bigger. What material you use, uh, what you're inspired to use is entirely up to you. But uh, I've got an old curtain. And uh, if you don't want to spend too much money, charity shop share idea, look in your cupboards, see if you've got any... Um, material that you don't want. This is a cotton. Uh, it's got flowers in there all over it. Uh, nondescript. It's not directional or anything like that because you have to take that into consideration if it is directional. So you know what tools and that you need. Um, you need fabric. You can actually make your own fabric. You want to use scraps of fabric up. Just, uh, uh, just make one big uh, piece of fabric big enough that enables you. You want Obviously you want two sides um, that have got and then you want to flip the bottom up to there give you, and then you want to flip the top down. So whatever you make you've got to have a big um, tour oblong uh, with right sides, both sides obviously because you've sewn it together, pulled it through and then, then, all, then you fold the bottom up and the top down and then attach your ribbon. It's as simple as that once you've uh, major lines for you. I'm going to make one two and a half inches. Right, so, uh, well, well I've just told you what we're going to do, so off we go. Right, so I've worked out how big I want my fabric, and I'm going to have it quite wide, wider than the other one, and I want it to come down further than the other one did to go over the top of the needles. I took my longest needle, longest needles and placed them on the top and obviously you've got to take into consideration that there will be a uh, seam allowance at the top uh, here and that's roughly and I, now you've got to decide whether you want your top showing and then you cover the tops up and or you want them actually in the fabric and then you can pull it further down uh, it's entirely up to where you want yours um, I'm just so my fabric at the moment this, this is but it is a large one so you might not want want one as big so that's something you'll have to work out for yourself but it roughly measures um, mine measures about 43 long or tall however you see it by 21 that's about 42 um, so yeah, it's totally up to you how you do yours. I'm now going to straighten it all up and get the edges clear, clean. Um, as I say, I'm not bothered whether about the fabric, which way it goes, directional or not directional. Um, that doesn't worry me because it is only for a knitting case. How you do yours is entirely up to you. You can have a, a nondescript fabric that um, it doesn't matter which what what you do, or where you put it. But anyway, at the end of the day, that's what I want to happen. So. Now we've got that far, I'll straighten the fabric up. 
Well, once you've got your measurements, I'm saying today I might land this. Uh, my toes are atlantic. Um, I'll be using white thread, bottom and top. Um, once I've test, once um, I did test my stitches and that on this fabric, it's absolutely fine. I've got my needle all the way over to the side, so I should imagine it's about three eighths. You can do any. Um, it's going to be your own pattern, so you can do any size that you wish. Um, I like, I seam allowance, but then obviously you have to make allowances for that when you're cutting out your fabric. Um, I've done one end, it's going to be an oblong, right size together, and then I shall leave one end open to uh, turn it through. then you do is find the gap and then pull it all the way through. Right, it's so had a good press. I did cut the, the ends off um, when it was the wrong side out, but obviously then don't go through your stitching. Um, turned it inside out, and as you can see there's my, where I turned it, and I've given it a good press all the way around. And then obviously then when you pull this tight, you, they go in automatically, you press it. And now I'm just going to sew across there, just to enclose that section there. So there's my length, my whole length. So that bit's done. And now this is the bit where we get to work out how much we turn up and how much we turn down. So let's sew across the top first. And this time I put my needle right to this side, so I've probably got just under a quarter of an inch and just above eighth of an inch. Now you could do it, you could do it that let's just show you. This is the section just here where you only just come on, so and then go off. And I think I might do that actually because I think I'm going to put that at the bottom. 
so and then I'll keep it as low as I can probably less than an eighth of an inch keep it neat and tidy just to sew the ends together both sides, this side and this side and then we'll come back. So I've uh, got it as straight as where I think it should be. Again I've got my needle over that side so it's about above eighth of an inch but below a quarter of an inch. I need to sew the sides together. If you've got really, really thick material, then you might want to increase your stitch. Mine's, I've got mine on two and a half, which I've had all the way through. to actually put our lines. Let's just move you back so you can see. There you go. Uh, right, well obviously, I think I'm going to do mine, you can press it now, it's just save if you want. I'm going to do mine at probably every two and a half inches. So I'll probably mark mine all the way across and see how many I get out. I'll just show you this bit, give you a rough idea of what I'm doing. Um, I don't know if it'll show up completely, but what I've done actually is marked across the top, and I've done two inch, two inch, and then one, two, three, four, two and a half inches, because I know that I've got a lot of the threes, fours, and fives, and sixes, so they'll go in the middle. Um, yeah, you mark yours up exactly how you want to, bottom and top to incorporate all the things you want to keep in here in your bag and what you've got and then mark and I'm using a friction uh, friction friction or something I think it's called yeah green one I've got a red one as well I'm using a green one today and then uh, just join top and bottom as best you can 
and then you've got to sew down making new channels so anyway you carry on doing that and then we'll get to the sewing when I'm done so I've been drawing on my lines I've got it measured out as oh, I think mine's with what all the knitting needles I've got I think it'll look all okay and then I'm going to sew down the line so I'm putting my needle back in the middle to make life easier making sure that you oops I lost my oops I now have <laughs> joys of uh, sewing. Put the re-thread. And then of course when you're trying to be quick you can't get it inside. Or well, you don't think you are. <laughs> Probably got it in every time. Mine's ready from right to no, from left to right. I think I've got that annoying. Their machines, so I do get mixed up sometimes with what they do. And then go back a couple of times. I mean, if you want to, you can do decorative stitches at this point. But I'd go back a few couple of times just to make sure because that's why it's going to get the most wear taking the needles in and out and again I do the bottom now you could if you wanted to if you haven't got very thick material this is a curtain with thick cotton so it's quite thick uh, reinforce the bottom where your points are going to go. So basically, you just do it to suit yourself. And again, from the top, reinforce. to match your room, your same room etc. We'll come back when I'm done. There you go. That's all mine that's being channeled off. We'll just pull back so you'll be able to see the whole thing. And the next thing I've got to do is sort out the sizes of the needles and then put them in and I'll come back. This is just to show you what I did with my needles before to keep them on. I actually put elastic bands around them and keep them in pairs and then put them, but I've got a five and a half, a five, I uh, can't remember what that one is, uh, three and three quarters, six, and I've got one lonely pair of nines. Um, so this is how I kept them, that's an, that's an eight, and then I should put them all in and try and get as many in as I can and see how we go. All the bits will pull it out. So what I've done is actually sorted out all my needles, and I've decided I've got so many. So I've put them all in the sizes, so I know exactly where I am with them. And all these at the bottom here, I should be giving back to a charity shop. I've got way too much. What I've done basically, I've got a two and a quarter, two and a half, three. I've got two threes. That one's really old. Where my finger is. That one's really old. And that one's a more modern one. Then I've got three and a quarter, and I've got some English, as you can see, size ten, as well as three and a quarter mil, three and a half, three and three quarters, four, four and a half, five, and then uh, five and a half, six. And I've got no six and a half, so I jump then to seven, seven and a half, eight, and then a nine. And these are really old, the wooden ones. Um, right, so there's ones I've decided to keep, and I'm going to give them back to a charity shop. So now, with what I've got, I'll have to double up some uh, runs in my uh, knitting case. I have sorted out my needles, put them in to where I want them to go. 
and the reason I've put these here is because I know in that first section which is a three inch one I've got anything from number two two and a quarter three three and a half three and a quarter three and a quarter so I've got all the twos and the threes and this is what I wanted to show you the reason I don't mind if mine don't stick out the top is because I'm going to mark and I've got these it's craft uh, what I use for card making and, uh, and I've got some green ink to match the fabric and uh, so and I'm not worried if they don't come out absolutely brilliantly but I've got this section here across here that I can put there and I've put turn it around and put number two at the top so in between this section just here I know I've got number two and number three or in that range there you go number twos and threes so all I have to do is just glance across in the next section I've got fours so I should take four out of here clean up me um, acetate or whatever you call that can't it's a block acetate block I think it's called I can't remember and uh, put the four on and then I should go across and then obviously push them down because I know where they belong then and then uh, I'm more or less finished except for the ribbon There you go, that's mine done. Just lift you up so you can have a look across. There's my numbers above uh, the channels, starting from number two and ending all the way from number nine. So that's why I'm not worried that my needles aren't sticking out because I know that between there are the twos and threes, there are the four, four and a half, uh, there are the fives and fives, and mixed up in that range six, seven, eight, and nine across the board. There you go. So all you do. So what we're doing now. It doesn't matter whether it's hidden. Um, now we've got to uh, work out where to put. Uh, right, this is the ribbon I've chosen to use. It's nice and thick, and it matches the, one of the colours actually on there, so that's far enough. Um, and this is how it's done. This is the bit you fold over. Just try and get you in shot there. This is the bit you fold over here, and then you roll it from this side and then you tie that one round, that one round there. Right, obviously with this one it's it's high. So wherever you roll it, fold it down to you want your, your ribbon to come halfway. So therefore my ribbon from see if I can get you in shot from there to there, the bottom will be halfway will be about there. So if I want to pull X amount, I can always cut it off afterwards, two of those and cut that in half and then half again there we go I can always do something with the bottom afterwards I know this has got the um, needles in that's because I wanted to show you how to print uh, basically what I did for this one is I actually left it all in all in one <laughs> so we'll do that again I can close that and then just fold it over and that way it won't fray at the end so as much as you want I think I'm going to leave that I think that'll be enough and then chop it off down here make it pretty at the end I'll cut it in a Hoping you can see. Push it down. There we go. And now all I do is attach. And so by machine, I can either do it on top or do it underneath. I do it underneath. Now, okay. So it's got. It's going to take me a while because it's got needles and I'm not taking them out. So I'll come back in a bit. So there you go. I have my ribbon attached, which then you roll up, and you give a nice bow and it's done there you go and i know exactly where my needles are at all, at all times they're neat and tidy they're protected but put them away in a safe place and there you go there you have it so there's a tutorial on making a knitting holder case there you go and my mum made one 50 years ago fortunately we still we haven't got that one now to show you um but um yeah, and now our daughter uh, has made one 
because she inspired me to make one. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> Thank you very much. Goodbye.